All right, we've been working with exponents, and now we're going to do a little bit with scientific notation. We're going to talk about different ways of writing numbers, which are called their form. The first, thing, the first one we're going to talk about is standard form. When we write things in standard form, now keep in mind, these are not official dictionary definitions. These are Mrs. Fawcett definitions. When you write in standard form, it's when you write the number up big. So it could be a number like 300... 26,280, or it could be 0 0.00038, all right, that's standard form. Or it could actually be something as simple as the number 20, that could be standard form. Exponential form is when you write a number with exponents. So you could have a number like 3 to the fourth power, or you could have a fraction with an exponent. Um, or you can actually have a negative exponent. You could have 5 to the negative second power. OK, lastly is scientific notation. When you use scientific notation, there's a few parts of it that you have to remember. The first part that you have to remember is that you're only going to have one digit to the left of the decimal point, and then you're going to have two digits to the right of the decimal point. So it may look like this, 2.56. After that, you're going to have times 10. You're going to always have a base unit of 10, and then you're going to have an exponent with it. Okay, This is what scientific notation looks like. You'll always have one place to the left of the decimal point, you'll have two places to the right of the decimal point times 10 to the, and then you'll have an exponent. That's what it looks like if you're trying to identify scientific notation. In a few minutes, we're going to talk about how to make scientific notation out of standard notation. OK, the last little hint that I want to make sure that you guys know is that whenever you have a number with an exponent of 0, that number is equal to 0, or equal to 1, excuse me. So like if you have 5 to the 0 power, that's going to be equal to 1. If you have 362 to the 0 power, that's going to be equal to 1. It doesn't matter what the number is. If the exponent is 0, it's always going to be equal to 1. Now let's go on and do some practice problems. Okay, The first set of practice problems that we're going to do are working with exponential form. So we're going to look at what they give us, 3 times 3 times 3. We know that, that our base is going to be 3. We count up how many 3's we had, 1, 2, 3, and we know our exponent is also going to be 3. Okay, let's go on to the next one. We know that our base is going to be 7, because those are all 7's, and then we count up how many of them there are, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so our exponent's going to be 5. Okay, this last one's a little trickier, because we haven't worked with fractions with exponents before. The numerator of our fraction is going to be 1, that's going to stay the same, and then in the bottom, we have 4's, so our denominator is going to be a 4, and we look to see how many there are, and we count them up. 1, 2, 3, 4. The next set we're going to work with is writing numbers in standard form, which again means writing it out the long way. So 3 to the second power, if we put that into our calculator, we know that that's 3 times 3, which is going to equal 9. Standard form would be 9. If we take 5 to the negative third power, we know that's going to be a fraction, 1 over 5 times 5 times 5. And you can either write it out that way, or you can multiply 5 times 5 times 5 and get 125. So you could also write it 1 over 125. Okay, the last one is another one that could be there to trick you. They give you a negative sign, but it's in front of the base number. So we remember that. It's in front of the base number. So that means the number that's getting multiplied is the negative 5. So our answer is actually a negative 5. Now, if we had negative 5 to the third power, that would mean negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5. I hope everybody caught that. We count up how many negative signs we have. One, two, three. We have three of them, so that means our answer will be negative because it's odd. And then 5 times 5 times 5 is 125, so it would be negative 125. So don't let yourself get tripped up by that. Okay, the next section is on scientific notation. Now, 
we have to go back to those rules that were on the first page that we looked at. We're going to have one number to the left of the decimal point. So if we're placing a decimal point in, we're going to place the decimal point so that we have one number to the left. I'm having trouble writing here. That didn't come out so well. Let's try that again. We'll just write it separate over here. So that means our number is going to be 5.240. That's rule number one is one number to the left. Now, the second rule is there's two numbers to the right. So if we take two numbers, it means we have to get rid of the zero. We can only have the 0.24. Our third number is that we're going to multiply times 10 is the base. And then our last rule is we need an exponent. Now, in our original number, our built-in decimal is over here. I'm having a little trouble here, guys. Let's try this again. Okay. And we moved our decimal point over here between the 5 and the 2. So if we count how many moves we made, 1, 2, 3, we moved it three places. So our exponent's going to be 3. Now my, my key to remembering if my exponent is going to be positive or negative is knowing that if my number is greater than 1, my exponent's going to be positive, my original number. In this case, my number was 5,240. That's well above 1. So my exponent is going to be a positive exponent. If my number is less than one, so that means I have one of these decimal ones like this next one, that means that I'm going to have a negative exponent. Okay, so let's look at the next one. We know that we need one number to the left of the decimal point, so that's going to be seven. We know we need two numbers to the right, so those are going to be zeros. And then we know that we have to have times 10 as the base. And then we have to figure out our exponent. How many places do we move? One, two, three, four, five. So our exponent's going to be five. And then I believe this is the last one we're going to look at. Let's follow our rules again. We need one place to the left of the decimal point. So we're going to have two point. And then we're going to have two places after the decimal point. Essentially, we would just put our decimal point right here. So we're going to have. 0.19. Okay, our next rule is using 10 as the base, multiplied times 10, and then we're going to move our decimal point to find out how many places so we can determine our exponents. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So our exponent is 9.